Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a 10.1 inch Android tablet known as the TechLast M40. I've actually had a lot of viewers asking about this and really it comes down to the CPU that this is powered by. It's actually using the Unisoc Tiger 618. And that might sound odd to some people. Usually it's a MediaTek in these cheaper Android tablets, but uh, sometimes we get a Snapdragon. But yeah, this is powered by an 8-core Unisoc SoC, and I've tested one of these in the past. It's actually not a bad CPU at all. As for the price on the TechLast M40, I've seen it go anywhere online for $140 to $180. It really depends on where you pick it up. And on Amazon, it is listed for $180, but if you don't mind waiting on shipping, you can pick it up cheaper from other sites. Now, inside of the box, obviously, we're going to get the M40 tablet itself a user manual, a USB Type-C cable, and our charging brick, which is only 5 volts, 1.5 amps. Unfortunately, this does not support quick charging, so it will take a little while to charge up the built-in 6,000 milliamp hour battery. I was really hoping that they would add quick charging to something like this. So straight out of the box, first thing I noticed with this tablet was the display. Unfortunately, it's not the highest quality. It is an IPS panel, but it's a non-laminated display at 1920 by 1200. Taking a look around the tablet, this does have dual stereo speakers. Over here on this side, we have our volume rocker, power button, and USB Type-C for charging. This does support a micro SD card up to 512 gigabytes, and around back here, we do have an 8 megapixel camera, but unfortunately, when it comes to these tablets, these cameras are never great. When it comes to the specs, on paper it actually looks pretty good, at least for the internals. For that CPU, we have that Unisoc Tiger T618. This is an octa-core CPU, 6 A55 cores running at 1.8 GHz, and two bigger A72 cores running at 2 GHz. For the GPU, we have the Mali G52 MP2 at 850 MHz, 6 GB of LPDDR4 RAM, 128 gigabytes of internal storage, plus we have that micro SD card, 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and this does support 4G. And as for the operating system, it's running Android 10. The only extra bloat that's on here, except for the Google stuff, is their update app. I really love the way they do this. They don't install any kind of ads or third-party applications or anything like that. When it comes to UI performance, it's pretty snappy, but really what's holding this whole tablet back is the screen. We do have a little bit of ghosting here. This is a non-laminate display. Even though it's running at 1080 by 1200 it still looks a bit low resolution to me. And this is definitely going to be a deal breaker for a lot of people. I really wish that TechLast would just go ahead and upgrade their screens in these things, because the last couple tablets that they had were decent tablets, but they were really held back by the display they chose to use. As a lot of us already know, these cheaper Android tablets usually have non-existent Widevine support, and this one's no different. We have level 3, which is basically the lowest level we can get here. You will not get HD Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO Go, but with the latest update of YouTube, you can still do 1080p with something like this. Let's go ahead and see how it handles it. So here we are with the latest version of YouTube. I'm going to choose a 4K video, but keep in mind we're only going to be able to go up to 1080p with this. So if we go full screen... We can check out the settings over here and make sure we're at 1080p. Go to advanced. I hate the way they have this new YouTube set up. So we're now at 1080p 60 and this Unisoc CPU can definitely handle 1080p playback. I really have no doubt that it would be able to do 2K playback, but our screen is kind of limited here. And since we don't have Widevine support on this tablet here, you're really going to be limited on what you can do in HD on this thing. Now if you wanted to do native playback from the internal storage or the micro SD card at 1080p, you'll have no trouble doing it. If you have a Plex server and you want to stream from that, it'll also work. We don't need Widevine for both of those, but for all of our favorite streaming apps, like specifically Netflix, Amazon Prime, and HBO Go, we do need Widevine Level 1, and this only has Level 3, so you're going to be stuck at standard definition. The next thing I wanted to do was check out a couple benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5, single core, 394, multi, 1362. Multi is actually looking pretty decent for an inexpensive tablet. Next on the list, we have 3 Mark Slingshot Extreme. This is testing the GPU's OpenGL performance. We got a total score of 1479. Moving over to the 3D Mark Wildlife test, which tests the GPU's Vulkan performance. Total score of 699. And finally, Antutu, with a pretty impressive score when it comes to these inexpensive Android tablets. We're over 250,000, and if we check out that GPU score, we're at 47,000, which is actually really good for a tablet in this price bracket. 
Now it's time to move over to some native Android gaming. First up, we have Minecraft. I do have fancy graphics on. We're at 12 chunks, and overall performance is really great. Going into this one, I had a good feeling it would run Minecraft at full speed. I mean, after all, we do have a pretty decently powered SoC in this unit. Another one I like to test is Asphalt 9, and by the way, with Minecraft in this one, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. I mean, it just paired right up. I also tested an Xbox One S controller on this unit, too. Next on the list, we have Call of Duty Mobile. We're at medium settings, and I have the frame rate set to high, or as high as we can go with this. I don't think we're quite at 60, but it's still an enjoyable experience on the M40 tablet. But when it comes down to it, this game is very well optimized. I've been able to run this pretty decently on lower end tablets, so let's move up to something that's a bit harder to run, and that's going to be Genshin Impact. And here it is. We're at low. 30 FPS, and uh, when there's a lot of stuff going on, you will notice a lot of stutters. This is not a tablet that I would specifically purchase for this game here. You could get by playing it if you don't mind the stuttering, but it's not really great. And we're at low settings here. Moving over to some emulation, first up we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. This is DOA2, one of the harder ones to emulate in my experience, and we're running at full speed. It's actually performing really well, and I am upscaled to 1280 by 960. Next on the list, N64 using the standalone version of Mupin 64 Plus FZ. For a lot of the lower end stuff, it's going to work out just fine, as you can see here with Diddy Kong Racing. Even stuff like 007 will be playable, but I was able to upscale this to 800 by 600 With something like 007, you have to keep it at that native res. DS is another one that performs really well, but it comes down to this emulator. This is the Drastic Emulator. It just works great on lower end devices, and you shouldn't have any trouble playing these DS games. And finally here for emulation testing, we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, 3x resolution, Vulcan back in, Tekken 6. This is a mid-range game to run, and as you can see, it is handling it just fine. So let's go ahead and see how it handles a harder to run game, and we'll go with Ghost of Sparta. With this one here, I did have to drop it down to 1x resolution, still using that Vulcan back in. And it's not bad at all. You will notice some hiccups every once in a while, and that kind of comes with the territory. But the performance that the T618 is putting out for these emulators is actually really good for the price. Unfortunately, we do have some issues with this tablet, and mainly comes down to the screen, as you can see. As for the performance of the Techlast M40, for the price, it's really hard to beat this kind of performance. But the screen really kills everything for a lot of people. Viewing angles are horrible. They're saying that this is an IPS display, but IPSs do differ. I mean, you got some high-end ones, you got some low-end ones like we have in here. And this has happened on other Tech Last tablets that I've tested in the past. We got good performance out of the CPU, RAM, and storage. Now, this isn't the fastest storage you can get, but it'll definitely get you by. Unfortunately, they paired this up with a really bad screen. If they would have went with a higher-end panel, even at the same resolution, because 1920 by 1200 is plenty for a 10.1-inch tablet, I could have recommended this tablet to mostly anybody looking for a budget option, but since they added this low-end panel, it's really hard for me to recommend. I do love the performance that the SoC they've chose to use in here puts out. I personally think it's a great budget option to put in 7-inch to 10-inch tablets, but we do need a better screen. I'm not asking for a 5K Super AMOLED display, I'm just asking for a decent IPS at the same resolution. If they would have added that to the M40, this would have been one of the best budget options on the market. But like I mentioned, it's really hard to recommend, and it all comes down to the screen quality. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Techlast M40, or if you have any questions in general, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.